That needs to recharge. The Rift Gun! You have triumphed. Rathma has blessed me. Hey guys, so I'm here. Uh, bringing you another build guide for Diablo 3. Uh, today we've got a speed farming build. Now, this is a build that I've been working on for a little while and I did a lot of experimenting with. Uh, and the reason that it took me a little bit longer to put this up than the other one was because I really just wanted to figure out what was going to be best for this, what was going to be ideal. And the truth is that after a lot of testing, it, it basically came down to, for me, that there are a couple, or actually several, uh, good options here, and it's really just a matter of personal preference. Um, there are a number of things here that are totally negotiable, so th it, this is a matter of just tailoring it to, the, to what you want, to the way you want to do it. Um, and I, I think ultimately, at the end of the day, hey, that's a good thing. If, if you've got more options to, as to what you can do, for this build, hey, that's better than less, I suppose. Um, but I'm going to give you a couple of different options here, and then you can t kind of test them out and see what, what works best for you, what you're most comfortable with. Um, what I'm going to go over with first is basically what I would consider to be the absolute fastest. Um, it's what I did for the GR60 in 1 minute 47 seconds. Um, I'm going to go over that first and then kind of go over an alternate setup. Um, so this is designed for, uh, again, it's designed for t uh, T13 slash GR60 to 65. I've done a 65 at like right at three minutes with this. I probably wouldn't push much above that, um, but that's kind of where it's, it's aimed at. T13, low to mid. Uh, 60s. In a 60, my average is probably two and a half minutes, two minutes, some, probably about two and a half minutes would probably be my average. Um, obviously, you can get below that if you get a particularly good rift, but on average, that's probably where it's at, about two and a half minutes, um, which is pretty good. Um, so, the kind of what I'm going to say absolute fastest form of this is also the squishiest form of this. Um, and this is kind of what led me to do some additional testing because I, I already had the details of the guide out there on Diablo fans early and some people were telling me that they're having problems with survivability. So I kind of came up with an alternate setup that is really, it's almost as fast, but way, way, way tankier. Um, but we'll start with the squishiest first. So as far as gear, we're going with five pieces of equipped Anarius, everything but the gloves. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, we're using Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion is incredibly good for speed farming, and Anarius is incredibly good for Corpse Explosion. So those two are like chocolate and peanut butter. Uh, it's just really great, really great combination between those two things. If you want to be able to basically just run forward and enemies die, Corpse Explosion is the thing for you, and Anarius is great for that. Um, so five pieces of Anarius equipped, and in the glove slot, we're using Grasp of Essence. This is a huge, 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 huge boost to um, Corpse Explosion damage. It's honestly not, it's a non-issue for regular enemies like Trash, but for Elites, this is definitely going to come in handy. Um, Trash is going to pretty much die just by you walking up next to them, essentially. And when they die by you just walking up next to them, then you start mashing Corpse Lance, or Corpse Lance, Corpse Explosion, and this is just going to destroy anything that's left. Um, so again, five pieces of Anaris equipped. The glove sl slot is going to Grasp of Essence, and we're using Ring of Royal Grandeur uh, to get our six piece out of Anarius. Uh, the rings are Convention of Elements and Crisbans, and out of these, of course, obviously you just use whatever your best three are. It doesn't have to be these two equipped and, and this one in the cube. It's just whatever the best two are that you have, that's what you have equipped. Generally speaking, Crisbans is probably going to be the hardest one to get well rolled. Um, I just happen to have gotten lucky and gotten a really good one. 
So that's what I have equipped, uh, and I have uh, Rorg in the cube. But again, whatever whatever works best for you, whatever the best roles are for you, that's what you have equipped. It's very easy to get a good convention of elements because the guaranteed uh, role on it is crit chance. So there's a there's a good possibility of getting a good convention of elements. Honestly, the hardest thing is simply getting a, a good uh, damage bonus roll on that. That's probably the hardest thing out of getting a good convention of elements. Because I find I get ones that's like a socket and crit chance on it all the freaking time. Um, but anyway, you get what I'm saying. Best two are equipped, then the other one goes in the cube. So, Inarius, Grass of Essence, Rorg. Then, in addition to that, we're using Crelms. This is uh, a really nice move speed buff. And on that topic, this is a move speed build. Okay, it's not based on teleporting. It's based on moving around really quickly. And for that purpose, Crelms is really good. 25% move speed uh, buff is really nice. Uh, now, the way this works is that whenever you get hit, whenever you take damage, uh, you lose that move speed buff for five seconds. And after you haven't taken damage for five seconds, you get that buff again. Um, and before anyone asks, uh, you do not lose this buff uh, from self-inflicted damage. The reason that's important is because of Blood Rush. If you teleport, you're not going to lose that move speed buff. You still have it. It's only from enemies actually hitting you. Um, so this is a very nice buff to your move speed. Um, and the thing here is that basically a big part of our defense, a big part of the design of this build overall, is very much the concept that you are running in and you are blowing up and enemies are dead before they have the chance to do anything to you. Okay? That is a huge... Our offense is a huge part of our defense here. Um, if you are walking up to those enemies and they are not dying and you're sitting there attacking it, you're going to have a bad time with this, okay? They need to be dying pretty much instantly. And they will with semi-decent gear um, and semi-decent gems. But that's something just to be aware of, that if that is not happening, that you need to either make a few adjustments or you need to drop your GR because that is, that is the basis of how this works. You need to be running in and blowing up and everything dying. That's how we stay alive. And that is how, when people are asking, how am I staying alive in this squishiest setup, the way I'm staying alive is because nobody has a chance to do anything to me because they're just dying as soon as I get there, basically. Um, and again, if that's not happening, then you're probably going to want to go with the tankier setup for this. Um, so, again, this is, a, this is a big part of, this is a nice part of our move speed. Um, and because of the, the reason I got onto that thing about how the build works is that because of the way it's designed of basically run in and blow up, you can, you can actually keep this Crelms buff up quite a bit uh, because you're just running in, blowing up, they don't have the chance to do anything to you and you just keep moving. Um, so this is very nice for that. Um, also equipped are Trang's Corroded Fang. This is a huge just 200% damage buff uh, to all the close enemies because we're using our frailty. Um, so basically this is just free damage, essentially. Um, lost time is equipped. The reason we're using this is for the extra move speed. Um, we are using the cold rune on bone armor, which itself gives us move speed. So we're getting, we're getting stacks of move speed from Harvest of Anguish, and we're getting move speed from lost time. Okay? So it's the two of those things combined, combined with crowns, you're, you're moving really fast. Now we're using Wisdom of Kalan. This is giving us both a 75% uh, damage reduction from our four piece, because it's now stacking to 15 stacks rather than 10. So we're getting a 75% a, a damage reduction and we're getting 15% uh, move speed from bone armor instead of 10%. So extra move speed, extra armor. This is really nice for this. Uh, Nemesis, that's kind of an obvious one for any speed farming build. You basically have to have Nemesis uh, because that just means you're killing more elites and you're making more progress quickly. Um, I guess, yeah, that, that covers all of the actual gear that we have equipped. Uh, in the cube, again, we have Rorg to get our six piece. 
So, Orzation Arm Guards, and I probably butchered that pronunciation, but Arm Guards, these are interchangeable with Steward's Greaves, okay? You can use either one. Both of these are move speed buffs. I found that, I found that in practice, I was getting a much more consistent move speed buff out of Arm Guards than I was from Steward's Greaves. The reason being is that Bone Armor, uh, bone armor, and you, since I don't have it on, you can't see it, but bone armor is doing a, a little, it's basically doing damage in an area around you. It's about, it's about the same size as that. And I find that just by running around while that's going off, you're just constantly breaking random debris and trash just scattered all over the place. And every time that happens, this is going off. And I, found, I find that with this build, I tend to run around more than I'm actually teleporting. Um, basically, I'm teleporting if there are gaps in groups of enemies. If there's a group of enemies right here, and I kill all of them, and then there's a group of enemies over here, in that specific case, I'm usually going to teleport this way. But if it's like a string of enemies, if there's just like enemy, 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 I'm just going to keep moving forward and just keep blowing up as I move forward. So basically the way that I use this is, is I find this a lot more useful. One, because like I said, I'm not using Blood Rush as much as I'm just running around, number one. And number two is that Bone Armor, uh, that Bone Storm does a freaking awesome job of triggering this constantly. But if you choose to switch them out, you can't go for it. Um, the weapon that we have in the cube is Raylina's Shadow Hook. Um, this is just giving us extra damage. It's really straightforward. Just, we're just getting extra damage out of this. Um, okay, so let's go over the skills. So, Cursed Scythe, Grim Scythe, is the most unimportant skill on this whole build. It's com this slot is completely negotiable. It doesn't have to be Grim Scythe. The reason I use Grim Scythe is not because it, it unto itself is necessarily great. It's not that this is anything special for this build at all. It's simply that I don't think there are necessarily a whole lot of other good options. Okay, secondary skills basically do nothing for this. We don't, we don't, we're not going to use any of these for anything. Corpses, we can't use any of the rest of these because we have to have corpses for corpse explosion. Um... We're using Command Golem. Command Skeletons we, we don't want because it doesn't help. And the only thing that, that would do is cut down on our armor because of uh, staying alone. So that doesn't do anything. Army of the Dead doesn't do anything. Land of the Dead is the most obvious thing for this slot. Now, you, you can certainly use that if you want. There's nothing per se wrong with using that. But... Obviously, if you watched my Nova Lancer build guide, you know that I hate this skill. I hate basically everything about it. I, I don't like... I'm not going to go into that whole big rant again, but I don't like using Land of the Dead. Um, and I don't find that it's necessary for this build at all. And, I, and on that same point, I would argue that whatever small amount of use that I might get out of Grim Scythe over the, <clears throat> over the course of that rift, it's probably going to be more then I'm going to get out of a two-minute cooldown skill on a rift that is two minutes or less. Does that make sense? It's not that what it's doing is bad. It's that it's a freaking two-minute cooldown skill in a rift that can take less than two minutes to complete without it. Okay? So if you want to put that in there, again, it's not that this is anything great. It's just that I don't find that this is necessary, and I don't find it's... I find that it's completely overkill for a less than two minute rift with elites that die basically instantly without it anyway. Um, you don't really need these other curses. They don't really do, <clears throat> they don't really do anything for you. Uh, Aura of Frailty, obviously you've got to have that because this is just giving you passive, you're running up to an enemy and you are getting your tracks bonus. So you got to have that. This is required. Um, but the other, the other two... You know, they don't really serve any purpose here. You don't need either one of these. Bone Spirit, it's not, again, it's not really going to do much of anything for you. Um, I mean, I guess you could try that out. I, I don't really use it at all. Simulacrum um, with Reservoirs, not a terrible option. That's doubling our damage because of Shadow Hook. 
But again, it's the same problem though. It's still a two minute cooldown skill and a two minute rift. I just don't, I don't find it necessary and I don't find it, I find it complete overkill. And I just hate long cooldowns. So again, negotiable, but not necessarily a whole lot of great options. Flesh Golem. Okay, so what this is for is basically for lone elites, which you will run into every once in a while. You'll be running around in the rift and then you'll see Joe Schmo. Uh, elite or champion pack over here by themselves just hanging out I guess trying to hide from you or something and they don't have a bunch of trash near them Well, then guess what you just throw this over there and it doesn't matter. You don't need trash and you just kill them anyway um, That's basically what that's for lone elites slash champion packs and Most commonly the rift guardian. That's what it, that's what it gets the single most use out of for me um, because the rift guardian has a Real, 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 real bad habit of spawning like 50 plus feet away from all the rest of the enemies that you just killed before you spawned in. Uh, he's really, really, really bad about that. So when that happens, you just throw this over next to him and it doesn't matter. You just blow him up. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically how that get, gets used. In a really, really good density rift where everything is just surrounded by trash Honestly, you don't even need this. You you can use it, I guess, but it's it's not necessary. If you're walking up to an elite and that elite has 15 zombies that are just ambling around outside them, you absolutely don't need this. You can run into that group of enemies and just start blowing everything up. Um, this is basically your clutch uh, corpse explosion when there's nothing to give you corpses to do it with. Okay. Don't I, I find that I just don't really need to use it most of the time. Um, Blood Rush. So this is basically your teleport. Um, the rune on this is totally negotiable. Uh, I like Metabolism because it, it just gives you an extra charge. It's, it's nice. But with that said, you could use pretty much anything in here. Um, I don't really like Molting because, again, the way that I'm, I'm using this build is essentially, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm blowing up the group of enemies here, all of the enemies here are dead, and then I'm teleporting over here to kill the new next group of enemies. In that, in that scenario, it doesn't do me any good to have... So this leaves a corpse where you teleported from. So this doesn't do me any good because the enemies that are where I came from are already dead. That's why I teleported. That makes sense? You can use this, but I, I don't see any use from it in the way that I play the build. Um, Hemostasis is a, is a good option because it removes your health cost. That's st very straightforward. That's a good option. Um, transfusion, yeah, it's okay, I guess. It's a heal. Uh, potency, I mean, under normal circumstances, this is a great rune for this. Extra armor. It's not a bad choice for this at all. Um, I honestly just don't find that I need it most of the time. I just don't really find that I, I need this in most circumstances. Um, I just, I tend to stick with metabolism simply because, again, the way I'm using it, let's say I hit a dead end or something. If I'm at a dead end over here, I'm just going to teleport quickly down this way. That's, you know, that's when that's going to come in handy for me. Um, but again, it's negotiable, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, like I said, our frailty is, is required. That's for our uh, Trag's bonus. Bone armor again. This is this is absolutely required because we don't get our damage we don't get our damage bonus out of Inarius without it, um, and in this case we're, we don't get our move speed bonus without it. Uh, corpse explosion. It's a corpse explosion build, so we gotta have this. And this is this is the ideal rune for this. This is basically not I would say not negotiable for this build. You really have to just have close quarters because you're just continually blowing up as you move forward. Um, Okay, so that's the skills. Uh, passives. Let's go over. Let's go over that. These are these are ranked um, in order of importance from left to right. Standalone being the most important, rigor mortis being the least important. Standalone is a huge mitigation or, or toughness buff. That's very obvious. You know, we're getting I guess 90% bonus to our armor since we have flesh golem instead of 100%, but it's still huge. This is this is a very great. No-brainer passive. Final service, also no-brainer. Um, especially since we are pretty, again, we're pretty squishy in this setup. 
This is a, no br a no brainer. This just saves us. I find that this is most useful in literally the first encounter uh, of the rift because that's when you know you teleport in and you don't have any stacks yet. You pop that bone armor as soon as you can, but let's say you get into a situation where you know you meet a, gra a bad uh, grouping of enemies and you only get you know seven or eight stacks instead of your fifteen. That's when it's probably going to come in the most handy. Um, but even when that isn't the case, it's still going to end up saving you over the course of the rift. I would say both of these are required. The other two, not as much. Overwhelming Essence is, is certainly good. It's a just straight damage buff because of Shadow Hook. But I wouldn't say it's required, but it is, it's nice. It's a ex nice extra, you know, roughly 20% damage boost. So I'm just going to do a quick edit here because I realized after the fact when I was thinking about this that I had something here wrong that didn't really make sense. Originally I had Rigor Mortis here. Um, the rationale being that, and it's not that this is wrong, it's just that it's not its not necessary. The rationale here was that um, I was thinking, in my head I was thinking that Bane of the Trapped was the only way that we were getting both um, the Trapped and um, Crisbin's bonus. But then when I got to thinking about it, in other words, basically, if they were outside this 15-yard range and you're hitting them, let's say you explode a corpse right here and it does a 20-yard explosion. If you explode a corpse here and then hit a dude that's over here with that explosion, in my head, you weren't getting... Bane of the Trapped and Crisbin's bonus because they were outside the range of your Bane of the Trapped. But in reality, in, in reality that's true, but in practice it's not really a big deal simply because of lost time. In lost time when you're walking around with your bone armor up, you're basically applying a five second slow to them anyway. So the the concept is still sta sound as to why rigor mortis is there which is essentially to apply a slow to enemies that are outside your bane of the trap range in reality since you're kind of just running around anyway with bone storm hitting with this you're basically doing that anyway i guess there's still the potential that you could use this here hit a guy over here that you haven't walked by yet with lost time but when I got to thinking about it, that made this seem even less important than I originally thought. The, the, again, the rationale here was that I was thinking that Bane of the Trapped is, on, is the only thing that's slowing enemies and it's doing that in a 15-yard range. You're blowing up a corpse here, it's hitting an enemy over here, so now he's getting slowed by a rigor mortis. That is true, but because you're also slowing them with lost time simply by walking by them, and even if you walk by them and now they're still back here, they're still affected for five seconds, I'm going to say this is not really that big of a deal. Um, it's still true what I had in my head. It's just that I don't think it's really that important. So I'm going to go ahead and just swap this for Dark Reaping. Um, and then we can just kind of continue on with the video with where it was uh, because the alternate setup is still going to not gonna it's not gonna be rigor mortis and it's not gonna be dark reaping either so we can leave that in but i'm just gonna say this should be the fourth slot if you're not going the tankier setup simply because this is just not really necessary because of lost time with this setup we're using bane of the trap that's absolutely required i would also say pain enhancer is required with Pain Enhancer, don't worry about the attack speed increase. We don't give a crap about the attack speed increase for this build. The reason we're using Pain Enhancer is because with Inarius, that the damage that this thing does is stupid. It does a ton of damage. Between Pain Enhancer and um, your Inarius Bone Storm, those are what's basically giving you your what i refer to as your passive murdering potential where you're literally just standing there next to an enemy and they just die you use your bone storm it's going off you know around in here you walk up to an enemy and 
he basically he gets crit by your bone storm or by your grim scythe that's basically that's basically the biggest thing grim scythe is giving us here is one extra opportunity to get your pain enhancer off that's basically it um but bone bones the bone storm does it too so that's fine so you walk up to you know a group of enemies your bone storm's going off it's critting and all those en enemies just bleh, they just die and when they die then you just start blowing them up um, so I'm going to say both of these are required. The third slot is kind of negotiable. For damage, these are basically your options. You've got Toxin, uh, Wreath Lightning, and Bane of the Powerful. I would rank these in order from best to worst from left to right here. Gem of Efficacious Toxin is more reliable for in terms of getting damage on that enemy and just killing them without you doing anything. For you just walking up to them. Gem of Efficacious Toxin is better than Wreath Lightning. Basically, the only thing Wreath Lightning is doing for you is giving you a, what I would say is an inconsistent move speed buff. Most of the time I find that it's like going off when I don't need it to go off. It's going off when I'm killing enemies that are next to me and then I start moving forward and it turns off. I just don't think it, I don't think this is a great option. It was a great option before the proc rate. It was awesome for that. But after the proc rate nerf, I'm going to say it's kind of meh. Um, I kind of feel like Bane of the Powerful is also just kind of meh. It's okay. It's extra damage and some extra mitigation, but meh. Um, the setup that I used, again, for this setup with, with Rigor Mortis, the most squishy slash arguably slightly faster version of this, that it's using uh, Gem of Efficacious Toxin. Okay. But I've been told by some people that have tried this out that they were having trouble with survivability, which is, that's totally understandable. Again, this is a squishy setup, and unless you're killing enemies very, very quickly, it's going to be a problem. So, the alternative to this, if you don't want to use Gem of Efficacious Toxin, is to use Gizzard. So if you put Gizzard in here, then go in here and swap out, and again, because I'm just considering this the most negotiable one in this slot uh, i mean it's kind of a toss-up between these two but whatever but if you swap this out for draw life between it, draw life is giving you more uh, it's basically multiplying your life regeneration for all the enemies that are nearby you and between this and gizzard which my gizzard right now is at 86 which is almost 100k life per second if you're in a group of enemies you get an absolutely stupid amount of recovery like, it's, it's obscene how much regen you get when you're in a group of enemies with this. Um, so if you're having trouble surviving, put this in here, swap out uh, either Rigor Mortis or um, Overwhelming Essence for Draw Life, and you should not have that problem anymore. And you will only be slightly slower. Uh, I've cleared a GR60 with this exact setup in right at two minutes. It was like two minutes and two seconds. Um, so this is still a very good option. The other the other benefit of this, uh, which is another, I mean, it's a really good part of this, is that the, the second part of this gem is giving you a shield, okay? It's taking 200% of whatever your life per second is, and it's adding that as a shield on top of your health. And the reason that this is especially good for this setup is that so long as enemies are only chipping away at that shield and they're not actually hitting your your normal HP, guess what? You don't lose your combs buff. As long as they're only, in, in this particular set of gear, as long as that enemy, those enemies haven't done more than 253% uh, damage to me, I'm still getting a move buff. So that makes this really good. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where this makes you both tankier and arguably, like, because you're keeping this up for longer, honestly, you're not losing necessarily a whole lot of, of clear speed. The only thing you're really losing out by this is slightly slower kill speed. Your move speed over the entire course of the rift is going to be a little bit better with this, your kill speed is going to be a little bit less. Still very good though, either way. My recommendation, honestly, would be to start here. Start with this setup, and if you find that you're comfortable with it, you like the gameplay, you, you don't have any problems with it, you're used to how it works, 
try switching to the other setup and see how that goes for you. If you do it and you find that you just are dying constantly too much, hey, that's okay, stick with this. This should still serve you well. Um, I think that's kind of it. Um, the only thing else that I would really say is that just kind of as a general usage tip is if you're if you do use um, arm guards like I'm using while you are moving around a dungeon and this is this depends on the map type kind of learn each map type and see see where trash tends to be located there are certain maps where it's really 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 easy to, to trigger this all the time things like um, like halls of agony those are kind of small uh, hallways and there's just garbage on the side of those hallways pretty much all the time so for those cases you can pretty much just keep moving forward and you're gonna keep triggering that the whole time you're moving forward um, for other types of maps, like some of the more open maps, like the desert maps, a lot of times you'll find trash kind of, kind of randomly scattered, but you'll find it most often around corners of the map. So try and kind of stick to the edges of the map. Like, you know, there'll be kind of holes in the map that are basically you can't walk through them. Those tend to have a lot of breakable trash on them. So try and stick close to those as much as you can. Uh, because that'll help you keep that move speed buff up um, more consistently. Uh, but other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to have some links to some gameplay of this at the end of this video so that you can get a better idea how it, how it looks and how it plays. Um, but please try this out. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know how it works for you if you have any ideas uh, or any suggestions or whatever. Uh, that'd be great. Um, and uh, I hope you have fun with it. And I should be coming back with another build guide before too long. Uh, it's it's kind of hard because I really love Anarius, and these are two the two builds that I like the most for Anarius. So I'm I'm trying to sort of convince myself to use another set to try something out with. Uh, I just haven't really dived into the other ones too much. Other other than Trags, I've done that a little bit. Um, but hopefully I'll be coming up with uh, something else for you uh, before too long. Anyway, I hope you have fun with this, and uh, peace out.